It's the Law Tigers Sacramento Mile presented by Nuff Insulation. This is highlights of our first semi race. And no surprise, Mies out front. The big surprise is look at the gigantic lady poles. Yeah, right away, Jared is trying to set a, a statement. Sammy Halbert ends up second, but usually in the mile tracks, riders are drafting each other down to the line. So you don't see gaps like that quite often. We go to semi number two, Bauman trying to hold serve here, battling Robbie Pearson. Yeah, Bauman gets into the lead and starts to pull away a little bit, but Davis Fisher got his first podium back here in 2019. He's definitely on it here today. Oh, he keeps it close as you traditionally see at a mile track, right down the line. We get ready for the mission challenge. That is $5,000 in a four lap sprint. Little bonus money here and a great start for Bauman. Yeah, Bauman gets a great start being on the outside, gets to the groove the quickest, puts the power to the ground. Yanks the whole shot. Okay, so we're going to have a little test here. This is not for championship points. Mission Food is just putting up a little bounty for money. Yeah, it definitely is. Like coming into the corner, they just pull out, and they use that draft to be able to slingshot by going into the corner. And Davis Fisher in the hunt as well. Look at him with the draft. Oh, almost got by Bauman. Yeah, sometimes when you're third back, you actually have even a bigger pocket there, and it'll suck you into the corner. It almost worked for Fisher. Right now, Mies. No, Halbert actually has moved into the lead coming out of turn two. Sammy Halbert on the Cool Beth Nyla Racing Machine at Indian Motorcycle looking for the win. Surprising to see Mies pinned back here in fourth. Let's see if he can do anything about it. The white flag for this Mission Foods Challenge is about to come out. Yeah, he's back there in the draft. I mean, he could very well be able to get by these guys. Oh, Davis Fisher gave it a look to get around Bauman. Now they're all tightened up. And you can see how close it gets coming into the corner as Davis Fisher slips off the groove. I mean, if you get in just a little too deep, they're all fighting for that groove that can't be more than like two, three feet wide. So, yeah, if you just get in a little too deep, look at Breyer getting a great run. Is it enough? Ah, not quite enough. It's going to come down the line and see if he's able to line the draft pass up. And you have Mies lurking back there in third as we head to turns three. And now it's going to be the drive off of four onto the front stretch here at Sacramento. Oh, Sammy did that great, got a good enough bike length. Ah, he's going to get it. Oh, Sammy Halbert does it. $5,000 richer and just making the statement that, yes, it might be me versus Bellman with points on the line for the title, but there are other riders that can get in the way tonight. And we'll see how it runs for the singles class. Start out with our semi number one. Trevor Bruner in the lead on the 21. Mikey Rush, who is a local product right behind him on the 15. Yeah, the singles class is exciting everywhere we go, but especially when it comes to the miles. I mean, you can throw a blanket over almost all, all the riders on the racetrack. And Daniels, your series leader, is back there in third, but he would get edged out by his championship rival. Max Whale takes it away from him, so that sets the scene. Those two are going to be scratching and clawing in the main event. We go to semi two. The big crash right here. Yeah, yeah, that was Hunter Bauer from Canada. Just got in a little too deep. The draft sucked him in, got in the backside of Shanny. You see how his bike is just sucked into her rear oh. wheel. And wow, that was a hard crash for Shana sliding into the air fence. Both bikes seem to be able to go. Yeah, you see she just lays it down right before the air fence, luckily. And luckily, both of them were able to get back up and were okay. So Shana texts her, then recovers from that. She's always good in the mile tracks and starts moving forward. Look yeah, she put her head down. She takes over the lead going into turn three last lap as she came all the way from the back to be able to make this happen. Very impressive. She gets around the 51 of Zavala. Now the question is, can she hold it coming out of turn four to the line even with the draft? No. Oh, looked like yeah, Zavala on the uh, American Honda was just able to get by her. It's going to feel very, very long with these long lap times. And let's see how it plays out. Revs are up. We're racing in Sacramento. Looks like maybe, yeah, it looks Bruner on the outside, gets to the groove the quickest, takes over the lead. And it's two KTMs, Texter Bauman and Whale, second and third, as we head out of turn three and onto the backstretch. Yeah, this is a good position for Max Whale to be put in. I mean, he has his uh, teammate right there. Maybe they can strategize together and keep themselves up front. And you can see the impatience of the number one, Dallas Daniels, already pulling out of line, trying to use the draft to shuffle forward. Yeah, you don't want to let these guys get up front get away. I mean, if they can break the draft, it's very hard to be able to catch him back. So, yeah, he definitely has to get himself up in the top three as quick as he can. And he's trying. He did it again. Oh, Cole Zabala on the 51, almost tangled with the 18. A whale at work. The two Hondas now one and two. 
Oh, but it is a game of inches or millimeters. It is so close. And Daniels has successfully gotten all the way to the number two spot. It's been a long road to get there. Yeah, now he's on the backside of Bruner, a rider that he grew up racing with as an amateur. These two got into each other at the Springfield short track. They definitely don't want to do it here on the mile, though. And now Daniels all the way to the lead. Yeah, what? Well, look at that. Daniels making a statement saying, hey, I want to control this race. Incredible charge. And now, could he break the draft? We'll see. He definitely has had some speed coming through. Absolutely not. Look at this. Bruner and Zabala and Texter ganging up on him with the draft. Yeah, Bruner pulled out and was able to get to the start-finish line first. Great racing all over this track here in Sacramento. Now it is the 15 of Mikey Rush taking the lead at the Sacramento Mile in the singles class. Almost got bumped by his teammate Dallas Daniels, who has now gone back to fourth. Yeah, that's the power of the draft right there, and this is so exciting about mile racing. I mean, you can go from fourth back to first and back to fourth again. Look at this. Dallas Daniels, like I said, takes over the lead. They were four wide through there, Brad. Now we come out of turn two, and we'll set it up again. Now Daniels has been trying to take the lead on the backstretch. This time he already has it. Maybe he wants to be in second. Wow, look at those guys <laughs> almost slide out. I don't know who that was. Oh, it was Max Whale. Uh -oh. Max Whale off the, the pace here. Man, that's not what he wanted. He's shuffled himself back in the pack big time. Yeah, so Whale and the number one of Daniels are battling for the title, but Whale has lost this group. It's a five-rider freight train, and he is not in it. Man, it's starting to get pretty rough going into turn three there. You've seen how Bruner got all out of shape. He kind of had a head shake going into turn three there. On to the back stretch. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Now on the front stretch, two to go. And Mikey Rush pulls out, but not quite enough to get by the start finish line, but he does take over the lead going into turn one. All right, it's going to be a game of inches. Can you get to the stripe and take the lead, or is it going to be too little, too late? Everyone's running the calculators to figure out the strategy because the white flag will be out next time around. Yeah. Well, uh, Dallas is doing what he has to do. He, uh, if he gets on the podium here, and Max Whale's back in the point or back in the pack. Kevin Stallings on the 99. Haven't seen him the entire race. He is right in this group as well, looking to pull an upset. Daniels, he needs the points. He wants the win. Here it is. Yeah, it's anybody's race still. Uh, Bruner kind of shuts the door on these guys. He's going to be in the lead off turn four. And we've seen him hold it out of four before. Can they draft him? Final turn. Front stretch. It's up to Daniels and Texter Bauman to try to draft to the lead. Here's the run to the line. Bruner has the gap. Uh, Shayna, maybe. Oh, no. She almost got there, but Trevor Bruner gets the win. Yeah, Brian Bigelow, the mechanic of the team, he's pumped up. Daniels on the podium in third, but the big story is Whale, who made that mistake, only finishes seventh. So he is going to lose a ton of points with only now two races to go. There is C Text right there getting ready. Fun to watch a twin on a mile, so this should be exciting. Yeah, definitely. Corey's been so dominant this year. I mean, he's snagged us almost every hole shot as he does here again today. But you got Chad Coase, a California native. He's not too far from, from not too far from here uh, in Fremont, California. He could very well be able to take the win away from him. So we got the Yamaha of Texter out front and the Harley Davidson of Coase there with him. But in the end, Texter would absolutely dominate this one. A massive lead. And not only the race win, which is big, but that would be enough to wrap up his second championship in three years in this division. Jesse Janish, who's done a great job filling in for the Vance and Hines, Harley Davidson folks up on the podium again in third. But Corey Texter, you see the emotions. He's your first champion of 2021 in AFT. Here's Briar's skin here tonight. Let's see if he's able to do it here again. So much on the line. Sacramento Mile main event. We're underway. Looks like a great start, possibly, but no, Jared no. Meese takes it over. I thought it was going to be Briar Bauman's. Well, he learned, so Meese spun the tire off the start of that mission challenge earlier in the night. This time he got grip, and he goes right to the lead. And Davis Fisher, who has been fast throughout the afternoon and now into the evening, is second. Yeah, these guys, they could all bunch up here before too long if they start to race each other too much. But look at Briar going around Whoa. the outside. Wow. That could have been bad for Davis Fisher. He, he held on to it, though. That could have been a high side. Yeah, he almost clipped the back of Bauman, who had to get desperate. He tried the outside line. He picked up a position, and now he's working on Halbert. But look at the lead Mies has built. Yeah, Mies has a 
huge gap. Now look at Breyer smoking it around the outside of Sammy as well. Doesn't hold oh! on to it though. And he almost threw it away, fighting to get back to the groove. Yeah, he's just doing anything that he possibly can to try to get by these guys to see if maybe he can break away and start to track down Jared, but making a few mistakes in the process. Pressure building here. American flat track from Sacramento. You don't even see the leader, Jared Meese. He is long gone. But behind him, what a fight we have seen. Sammy Halbert, very stingy with the number two spot. He has not allowed the number one of Briar Bauman to get him. How about Davis Fisher marching himself back up into this, this podium spot battle? I mean, he was a ways back after slipping off the groove, and he's tracked these guys back down. I cannot believe that. Multiple passes, and he has pace. In fact, it looks like he's looking to set up a pass right here on Bauman, and he gets it. He does, and it wasn't well. Look at Breyer says, no, I'm going to hold it on. and goes right back around him, almost does a replay. What sent him off the groove in the first place? You have to do it, though. You have to do it. Breyer Bauman, your serious leader, working on three straight titles. He is losing points quickly. Look at how big the lead Jared Meese has. So we are seeing Bauman take huge risks here. Yeah, Sammy's a smaller rider than the riders behind him. I mean, he probably has a good you know, maybe 20, 30 pounds on these guys, and, and that's horsepower. Horsepower is definitely weight on bigger tracks like this, and he's small, so he's able to get out of the wind. That can definitely play a factor of why he's able to, you know, be hard to draft by going down the straightaway. Oh, the aggressive tuck to try to neutralize the aerodynamics. Oh, Bauman <laughs> used it, almost made the pass. Yeah, he's almost up in the cushion there. It's like, you really don't see that on a track like this, trying to, you know, go a, a wider line, but that just shows, you know, Breyer's leaving it all on the table, trying to get by. He has to, two laps to go. He is still not able to get around Halbert, and now Fisher's down to the inside, almost took third away. Yeah, these guys, if they, it might come down to the last corner. They could uh, get aggressive and try to shove one another off the groove. Look, if you're Davis Fisher, it's been a long time since you've had a podium. You do not care about the points for Bauman. You want to make this pass, and here comes the 67 to do it. Yeah, he's desperate. I mean, he wants to be able to get a... Whoa! whoa. That was that, almost in a replay of what we saw earlier, and he makes the move. Man, that is not what Breyer wanted. Man, he's all the way back to fifth right now. Oh, it's a disaster! Jared Meese could be the points leader at the end of this race if it ends like this. One lap to go. Bauman has to pull out a miracle. Yeah, Breyer is going to have to to really pull out the boxing gloves right now. He has to be careful not to, to, to put anybody down or put himself down. It's his fast racing, but he has to put himself back on the box. Fisher leaning on Halbert, and he takes over second. Look at Breyer up around the outside. Well, Woo! we got... Vandercoy on the inside pushes Fisher off the groove. And somehow Bauman was able to follow him through. So Vandercoy, as you called it, goes from fifth to second. Look at this. Jared Mees coasts across the line with a massive win. And maximum points as well. Battle is on. And it's going to be Vandercoy. And how did Bauman recover for third? Man, that was a crazy last corner for those guys. I mean, with uh, Fisher slipping off the groove, that allowed Briar to get back on a podium, but nothing but celebration for the Mies camp. You see Kenny Tolbert there, it is pumped up. And that guy knows how to build a, a rocket ship of an engine, and it showed here tonight. Oh, there is no doubt, no challenge at all. Started pulling away immediately. You saw Vanderkoy sitting back there, and I think you liked the spot he was in. Yeah, I definitely think he did. I mean, he put it in the right position on the last lap. Just got underneath Davis Fisher and slid him off the groove and took over second.